We're at Valentina the Sex Mix Barbecue in Austin, Texas. I'm Modesty Vidal. Uh, Miguel Vidal. This is my wonderful wife and business partner. This is my personal chef. Yeah. <laughs> this is Miguel's food that he grew up eating, but better. <laughs> I've worked in restaurants since I was 15 years old. I met Modesty back in uh, 2005. We named the business after our daughter. I wanted to be able to represent, uh, she was the baby at the time. I wanted to represent what I felt was true Tejano cooking and true uh, Mexican-American flavors here in Texas. And what better way than to be able to have barbecue and fresh flour tortillas, right? And then everything else that comes in between there. So the business is really based off family and everything that we do is to <clears throat> be able to share with people and with family. Every customer that comes in, we want to treat them like they're my aunt, uncle, brother, sister, mom, could be. dad, <laughs> home cooked food, but presented with such quality that it can stand up to any five star restaurant. That's what we want to do. But we want to have a relaxed atmosphere where anyone can feel comfortable, you know, put their boots up on one of the picnic tables and just kind of relax and enjoy something. What we're trying to do with the food is put some, like the love and attention and detail into it so that when you are eating the food, it can take you back to a time that it reminds you of something special. My brother has become our lead pit master now. He's been with me since the beginning, so six years. Uh, my sister is... Uh, yeah, head prep cook over she here works, runs the prep She works every day, almost, maybe six and a half days a week. And then she babysits our kids too. I do have another sister that will help out from time to time. She, mostly she lives in, like two minutes away from us. She's so. mostly involved with helping out with family stuff, watching our kids, or doing caterings and events. And I have uh, two cousins that have worked here for five years plus. And they are all involved with the barbecues because even though they had very little to zero restaurant experience coming in, they know the flavor and profiles I'm trying to push out based off my family's cooking. We source our meat from Harley Ranch, which is right outside uh, Waco in Stephensville. And, uh, you know, we've worked with these guys to be able to have, you know, a, a never ever, which means uh, an all natural brisket that's grass fed. We're using prime briskets. Most of their Angus cows actually are actually graded closer to prime. It's, it's important to me to know how a cow is living and how it's, what, what it's fed. So we use 100% mesquite wood, right? Um, in central Texas here, it's typical to use post oak or oak. I think it gives us a distinct flavor. I think when you're thinking about Mexican food or South Texas food, and you're thinking about asadas or grilled meats or whatever, you, or the, the al carbon uh, kind yes. of style, you're thinking of like hot, the grill, the smoke, the fire, right? And those flavors, when we add it to our barbecue, it kind of, it, it, it blends those two together and it brings, it, it brings that flavor out. Um, so those flavors you're getting from the asadas or, or carbones, when you do a long cook with the brisket, you're gonna have those elements there too. And that's the flavor I'm going for. So we use offset pits. We don't do reverse flow. There's like pits that are offset, but they're also reverse flow. Now we have this continuous flow going through here. Um, we use three quarter inch steel. This pit right here is a 36 inch barrel. The mesquite wood, we wanna burn a lot and be able to have coals so it can not be over smoked and continue to burn. So I, I like the space in the room in there and it does burn hot so I don't, I don't really need to keep, have an insulated firebox. So right now these don't have anything on them. We're gonna get ready to load them up with our, our brisket. We, we fit about one, two, three briskets here. We'll do about 21, 22 briskets on here. These are our whole chickens. They cook for about four hours, three and a half to four hours on the chicken. When, we, when we're cooking these whole chickens, we're gonna look for a crust to start developing again. And you're gonna see some of the juices are naturally coming out. These should be pushed over actually just a little bit more. They're a little bit too tight, too close to each other. But we're gonna know that the chicken is ready in about an hour and a half or so, just by taking the tail, okay? I'm gonna put slight pressure and if it starts to pop off, we're gonna pull it. So this is a, the dry rub for the brisket. The beef ribs will take this on too. Beef ribs and brisket will kind of basically have this, this combination right here. When we do pork, pork is super heavy on just a dry rub. Mm. And then we add more salt to it. And then once it get, the pork gets wrapped, it's gonna hit brown sugar, so get a little sweetness to it. Here you're looking at a packer brisket. These are from Harney Ranch. They're 100% grass-fed um, 
uh, uh, black uh, black Angus beef. Mm. Here, what we do is we're gonna we're gonna look at this brisket. So like we were talking about earlier when I was using my hand, showing you what the brisket looks like. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Flat point, the deco right in here. You have the fat. This fat's never gonna really render out as much, but I also might trim out a little bit more than most people. So I'm going for some aesthetics and stuff too, right here. Now this fat will just kind of sit inside the brisket and never render out, so I'm gonna clean some of this out. And as I'm creating my cuts here, I'm gonna start creating the line to be able to have a quarter inch thick. We're gonna look for about a quarter inch right here mm. and go about half inch on the, on the fat side. We this, just ate it. This is from, from the deco without oh. the bottom part. This is, in my opinion, yes, like the, the two best pieces of brisket that you can get. Mm. Fresh press? Yeah. Should we just like... This is our answer, <laughs> this is our answer to, to white bread. It's a good in, answer. In the barbecue, you know? It's very hard to answer back. In the barbecue, yeah. <laughs> This can be eaten just like this and stand on its own. That's my goal. White bread, meat. <laughs> tortilla. Yeah, That's my but it's a good tortilla yeah. <laughs> and really good meat, you know, right? And so then these elements here, right, when we pair together, are to just kind of enhance the flavors and work well together and balance each other out, not to mask. This is what we normally serve sausage with. We take our mesquite, we make a habanero mustard here. So we take our mesquite smoked barbecue sauce. We smoke our barbecue sauce for like six hours. So it's very easy. It's like, it's ketchup, vinegar, Worcestershire. You make the sauce first and then you smoke it? Then so you smoke like it. cold smoke it? Yeah, I don't go about six hours. So what we're looking at right here, look at the nice little quarter inch of the fat. So all the love goes in before trimming. Right? Yep. To kind of create this nice consistency here for each slice. So, this is <clears throat> my opinion, right? Off the deck with some of the best slices that you'll get, even if you want to call burnt ends or whatever. But this stuff usually we mix and chop in our tacos so it has some bark in the mm. tacos. And this is just what's left from the meat that you kind of dug mm -hmm. from in between the two pieces, right? right? 